friends and welcome back to the channel. I am Cher. So as the title on the thumbnail uh, describes, we are going to be doing another eyeshadow palette ranking video today. A little different though. I'm going to attempt to rank all of the eyeshadow palettes I have gotten in my Ipsy boxes over the last couple of years since I've been getting PR. I'm going to try to rank them in order of least favorite to favorite, like my most used to used and why. Now the basis behind this is several reasons. One is that I desperately need to do another eyeshadow palette declutter. I know I just did one. Um, however, my drawers are getting stuff full again, and some of these Ipsy palettes might be on the chopping block, so it's kind of a neat way for me to assess my palettes, the quality, how much I'm using, and all of that. Second reason is because I thought it would actually be helpful for you guys, because I often see in my comments in all of my Ipsy videos, um, a lot of mixed reviews on the palettes that we tend to get in Ipsy. We talk a little bit about the quality of the palettes. Some love them, some hate them. Um, sometimes I love certain ones and others disagree and vice versa. So I thought, I think it would be helpful for us to discuss it. The quality of the formula of some of the palettes that we get in Ipsy, which ones have been better than others. And you know, you can share your thoughts as well. So I thought, this will be a fun topic, I think. I also do a monthly um, eyeshadow palette rankings video where I bring you guys at the end of every single month um, my rankings on all of the palettes that I used for the month, and we try to like put them in order of favorites and all. Um, it's really fun. It's really stretched me to kind of go outside the box, to use palettes I hadn't thought of in a while, to come up with new makeup looks. I always love to include my makeup looks in that video. And so this is very similar, and you also probably, if you've been around here and watched those videos, you'll notice Ipsy palettes end up in there a lot, especially the ones that I do try-ons for you guys. I do those every month when I get my Ipsy boxes. I always follow up with a try-on video, um, and I usually have a palette, at least one palette in there to try out. So I've got a lot accumulating, but I thought let's narrow in on just the Ipsy ones. Um, so this is especially for my Ipsters out there. Um, yeah, so let's get started. If that interests you, we'll hop right on in. All right, guys. So, um, like I said, disclaimer here, most of these palettes were all gifted to me in PR. I wanted to let you know, I've not used my own money on them. There were a couple though in here that friends gave me that already had Ipsy boxes too. You know, like certain things I expressed wanting to get and I didn't get and you helped me out and sent it to me. Um, and then I had a friend that, you know, she sometimes sends me things that come in her Ipsy that are just not good shade ranges for her. So she sends them to me. So there's a few of them I did, you know, that didn't come straight from Ipsy, but they were still like maybe somebody else gifted them to me. Um, also, I do have a couple also that I had already decluttered in another eyeshadow declutter video. Most of them were just the little small ones that we got in Glam Bag. Um, I can't remember if I have decluttered any of the bigger ones like in BoxyCharm or not. I still have a few left over from Glam Bag though that we're going to talk about. So anyway, let's get started. I don't want this to turn into an hour long video. So I'm going to go in the order of least favorite to favorite and I'm going to talk about why. So we are gonna pop it off here at the very bottom. I think I have 28 palettes that I counted. Hopefully I didn't count that wrong. So I think coming in at number 28 is Beauty Bakery, Proof is in the Pudding. Now I did wanna tell you something about uh, Beauty Bakery. You know, they recently closed down, like all of a sudden. Um, what's her name? Ch Chastity, Charity, I can't remember her name. The CEO basically decided to shut down. Uh, big part of it was like for her faith. It just was like basically being a CEO was no longer in line with with her values and whatnot. But the company is now being bought, I just learned. So we're going to see kind of a resurrection of Beauty Bakery. I'm really hoping that they, you know, keep all the cute bakery themed things, but that they really improve their formula. I'm not a huge fan of the Beauty Bakery eyeshadow palette formula. I mean, it's not horrible. It's just this palette is just very so-so to me. Like, the color store just doesn't scream. It's just your basic, like, 
neutrals and whatnot. I think it's just, it doesn't go on super pigmented. The mattes are kind of dry again. I do like that one color right there on the top, that shimmer. Um, but it's like, I just don't reach for this palette much. And I do have a couple other things from Beauty Bakery that I actually really, really like. The, the eyeshadow palette is not, not all that great. Kind of boring too, in my opinion. And I don't mean to offend anybody with these, but just my take on it. All right. You guys are not going to be surprised at all if you've been around here to know what is at the very bottom too. <laughs> we got some Laura Geller. So if you've watched any of my recent videos in the past, you'll know I've talked about not being a huge fan of Laura Geller products in general. Um, the eyeshadow formulas though, big time just they're so dry in my opinion. Um, I know there's some folks that are big Laura Geller folks. That's just not me. And she also really caters to an older age range, which I should fit in that age range being 46, but the marketing is just like, yeah, we've talked about this in the past. I won't rehash it, but anyway. Um, so we got this Soft Satins Six Matte Eyeshadows and Two Highlighters. It doesn't even really have like a name. <laughs> I think that's the name of it. Um, very fall-like colors. The only things I even like in this palette at all are the highlights, if even that. And so I just, not a fan. I'm just not a fan. And similarly, we just got that Wildflower Wishes one. Um, I liked that a lot better because the color story is really pretty in here. It's just compared to all these other palettes that I own, like this is still going to fall towards the bottom. So I did end up liking this a lot better. Like this color story was nice because it did have that wild flower feel to it. And I liked, it was kind of like these subtle yellows, a little more fall leaning in my, in my opinion than summer. But you know, you kind of did get like a wildflower feel that could be summerish um, effect from it. And I loved that it still had more shimmers in it, but it was just, it's just still like the Laura Geller formula is not, is not my fave. <laughs> so this one's still falling pretty low, just in comparison to so many of the others we've gotten. So we've got Violet Boss. This is the Pretty in Paradise. And I actually compared this a little bit to the Tom Ford quad. I have a whole video on like, how similar I thought the color stories were. So we went into depth on that. Um, I have it fairly lower just because these are not colors I tend to wear all the time. They kind of remind me of like a Florida flamingo, you know, you got that like flamingo look definitely, but I'm not so sure they look great on me. So I think that's a big part of what it is. We have the Tarte Sunrise palette. Um, here it is inside, and I still really like it, but I think it's just that it's, you know, it's another neutrally, but almost like, I don't want to say gold, but it is more on that creamy, not orange, but like warmer side. And I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed working with it and playing with it, but um, I don't think it's around anymore. This is another one that got discontinued. And I just, I don't always like getting palettes in Ipsy that have been discontinued. I want ones that are like still around. <laughs> I just have a thing about that. And um, yeah, so it's just sort of so-so. I think it's just kind of boring. But I mean, I am definitely an everyday colors kind of girl though anyway. Like I, I like very wearable looks. Um, they're like more useful for me. It's just, this is kind of, it's just so-so I guess. Next we have from What's Up Beauty, we got this one in Glam Bag. I don't remember what the name of it was, does it say? Maybe Plumore? Okay, Plumore Eyeshadow Duo. I, I mean, I love this little set, especially, I mean, it's that color right there that's everything. And this was my first time getting to try What's Up Beauty. I mean, I loved this. The only reason it's ranking so low is because it's just only two shades. So, uh, that was all, you know, like I'm just not, I can't, I never reach for it because it's only two. And then it's like, it's not really too 
that are just wearable for me. Like if I'm going to have a little bit more colorful, sparkly and all of that, I'd rather it be in a bigger palette. I think the only reason I'm ranking it is like lower is just because of that factor. Not because there's anything wrong with formula. I actually really enjoyed this. I love that purple. Okay. And then somewhat similar is this Renee Rebel Day that we got in Ipsy Glam Bag. I really enjoyed this one too. I love the pop and blue in it. it. Made a really pretty, awesome look. I was very excited about this palette. Um, I think it's just, I don't know. It's plasticky, the cheapness feeling of it. It's smaller too. It's from Glam Bag. So it just, um, I don't know. And I don't wear it that much. I do love the pop and blue, but that's about it. But it's still, I mean, I still was really excited about it and really liked this palette. It's just in comparison to all the others. The next one is Dominique Cosmetics Unconditional Palette. I was so excited to get this when we got it. And it was like maybe close to Valentine's Day too. So it was so perfect and fitting. The only reason I haven't ranked it like super, super ultra high. Um, I love the idea of this like pressed glitter in here but it's almost too much. It's just, it's messy and all over the place and a little hard to work with. Um, if I just stick to the other colors in here, it's a little better, but I think it was just, it was so much in here. So yeah, but I was excited because I think this might've been the first one we got from Dominique Cosmetics and I was excited to get something from her and it was very fun, you know. All right, the next two are Il Maquillage, which we've been seeing so much lately. We've been talking about this is the Il Maquillage, um, one of the quads. I've got like three different quads. This one is the Trendsetter, and it's my least favorite. I think it's just, okay, it's more like berries, but it's a darker brownier color berry. So that's in my last. The next one in the next place in line, as well as my second favorite is this one is the real deal and it's a little bit more I don't know it, it's a little more wearable berry like it's getting closer to neutral you know what I mean and so I kind of like it just a little bit better the neutral one's the one that's my favorite but that's further up the line so we'll talk about it now I love the Il Maquillage formula so I really love the brand I think it's just the color stories in these I'm just not I don't always love to wear like burgundies and berries that much. So I think I'm just getting tired of the same repeat like quads. Now, one of these came in one of my boxes and the other one did come from my friend Mella who ended up sending me her extra one, I think. Next, we have the Destino Alamar Cos from Alamar Cosmetics. This was such a like different kind of palette for Ipsy that I've ranked it a lot higher because it was so colorful and just like such a interesting color story. It was hard to kind of find my like, I think I had sort of a, a very different look on this one when I did the try on. Um, so I like this idea from them. It's a weird packaging though, how it opens kind of bulky. Cause like there's all this room over here that's not being used, you know? And then, I don't know, like, it's kind of wasting a lot of space up here, in my opinion, but, um, but it was a neat concept. I mean, was it the best formula I've ever used? Not necessarily, but I think like it's just had such a colorful, interesting color story that it ended up enjoying it and being really impressed. Next, we have the Violet Boss Dreams or Berries and Cream Dreams palette. Um, I... I love this palette. It's all pinks. It's very berries and pinks, um, which, you know, I find, even though I love pinks, I still find I don't always wear like hot pink like this though and like ultra berry colored. So it has its place. Like I love it for Valentine's Day or like when I just really want to go extra pink, but it's not the most wearable pink for me. So it's still ranked kind of down there. Okay, next we have that Ace Beauté Mystic Romance palette. Now, we got this one, I think, around Valentine's Day, too. I actually wore this on Valentine's Day for my date. And I have mixed thoughts on it. On one hand, 
everybody I think was so excited to get this palette. This one really was a hit with a lot of people I remember. And I remember it not being such a hit with me. Like I love the look I ended up creating, but I think in general, like I don't reach for it that much. I love the idea of it, but just in practice when I go to carry out the looks, I don't have everything I want. Like there's not a good shimmer color to me that goes with these deeper cool tones. They're like more warm tone down here or you got purples. So like, I feel like you need some lighter shimmers to match this row in here. Like this is the row I want to play with the most, but there's nothing I can do with it other than like a white. So I had to kind of do my warms with these deepers and I liked it and I liked the purples that it made, but it's just, it's just, I don't feel like it flows together. And then on top of that, I felt like the formula was a little hard to work with, uh, just in my opinion. So I kind of, it's like mixed reviews for me on this one. So that's where I'm at with that. Some of these other ones that might surprise you, I ranked higher just because I can work with them a lot more or they're like more useful to me. So like the REM Beauty, you guys have seen me in my rankings video, use this one often. What I like about it is it's so cute. I like the packaging and I it has been very friendly for travel for me, very convenient. There's a couple of different looks I've made out of it. It's very wearable looks for me. Formula is not bad. Um, you know, this is, uh, what's her name? Ariana Grande's line. Um, this is the baby doll palette, but I don't know. I've ended up really enjoying it. And so I think that it's, it's just, it's a little higher than the others because it's so wearable and functional for me. All right. And then we also got, um, the Ofra Signature Palette Lux. Now this one came from my friend Mela too. I did not get it straight from Ipsy. But I think she got it and then gifted it to me because it had a lot of warm tones in it. And she doesn't do a whole lot of warm tones. She's a cool tone girl. Um, I ended up liking this one a lot. The biggest reason I love it, though, is for the Rodea Drive right there. And that is like my favorite. It just pops. But this pretty much only makes about one look for me. So that's why it's not ranked super high. I love Ofra. I know there's mixed reviews on their eyeshadow. Like... The Ofras that I have have worked for me. Um, so I was happy to get it, but it is sort of limited on like what to do with it, you know. But that one look that I make with it, oh, it's killer. <laughs> but a little higher than that is the Iconic London Beachside Babe palette. And I have just loved this one, like for summer especially. And this was another one that just seemed so unique for Ipsy. It's so colorful, but the perfect like summer vibes. And I've loved all the shimmers in this. I've loved, loved all the looks I've made with it. I've been able to do a lot with it. And I just have ended up really enjoying it. So this is fairly high. All right, we're gonna talk about this brand later on in my rankings. But for now, this one is the Siete London Spice Palette. And this was my first Siete London one. You will start to recognize I love Siete London, but there's some controversy with that, like some mixed reviews on it. Um, and I'll talk about that more then. But this one has been really nice. I love it. Even though it looks like you get straight up berries, a lot of the looks I get out of this come out with a softer pink look. I know it doesn't look like it in the pan, but it really does. But it's also great for like fall and even for Christmas time with like, you know, the berries a little bit. Very different. I get different looks from this one than say that berries and cream one from Violet Boss. Like, I don't know, like they look like they'd be similar. I know, but this one definitely comes out a lot more just straight up berries and hot pinks. This one to me can be a lot more wearable in my opinion. And, and it may be because you got a little bit of warmer colors mixed in too. So I don't know, but I, I really enjoy this one and it really does have a use for me. But next is the Pat McGrath. Um, what was the name of this one y'all? Divine Rose, I think. Doesn't say on here, but I think I'm remembering. Yeah, it was the Divine Rose Luxe palette and 
hello, it's the, it's Pat McGrath. So this is going to rank up there. Now, still a little hot pinkish for me, but man, when I want to do hot pink, it is stunning. I always love the Pat McGrath formula like mad and that shimmer right there is so beautiful. I need to compare this to the Natasha Denona, don't I? That new pink one we got in the Trend Mood box. That's what I need to do. I need to compare these two formulas. Um, but anyway, so it's beautiful, but the only reason it's not at the very top is because it's just, it only makes like one look for me. Um, it's just a quad and it's not something I wear all the time. I love my pink, but it's not a wearable pink I'm just going to do all the time. So, okay. That being said, I know this is crazy. This is crazy of me. I actually rank a little bit higher than that. The Shades by Sean, Life of the Party, y'all. Um, compared to Pat McGrath, right? I just, this made the most beautiful look when I want to wear that pink, but it's the perfect shimmer of pink right there. And it's not like too hot pink. It's like just the perfect subtle pink. Like I would wear this for my everyday palette, like any day. It is just perfect. The perfect color story for me. It's easy, quick. Yes, it's only a little quad, but it's like I just felt so, I feel so pretty in this. This is just, this is like pink princess right here. And I have loved this palette so much. So it actually ranked higher than the Pat McGrath quad. Can you believe that? For me anyway. <laughs> but above that, y'all, oh my gosh, I love the Fenty Beauty Little Snap palette they gave us in like an icon box maybe or something. Love when we get us some Fenty Beauty. And I love this kick -A palette. This makes a gorgeous like party nightlife look. No, it's not my everyday, but it's like killer for those like cooler tone. Like I feel like this is the perfect like New Year's palette. And I think we did maybe get it in the winter. Um, gorgeous winter palette to me. And so convenient again, the little just small little six pans, great for travel, but makes a such a unique, like awesome formula and it's Fenty. So come on. Next, I have that Il Maquillage that I mentioned and I have loved this so much. This is my like go-to neutrals quad, easy, but bougie and luxe palette. So this is what I wear when I just want to feel like I wear this a lot of times to my weddings when I do makeup for clients to kind of not scare them with a really wild, colorful eyeshadow look, you know? but that looks bougie and professional and like a great formula. And that's just like my everyday look. It goes with everything. It's convenient because it's in the quad, but then like, you know, the packaging of Il Maquillage is always so gorgeous. So um, I love this one. I love that we get it. I just, we're starting to get Il Maquillage a lot. Those only things, so, you know, I might be getting a little tired of it, but I do love that. This is the original one I think that I got and I fell so in love with it. I was so happy about this. So now we do have some more Pat McGrath, okay? And this one I have loved, loved. We got this in Icon Box. I think it was when we had. No, it wasn't even when we had the Pat McGrath um, Icon Box. It wasn't even when she was the curator. I think it was before that. It blew me away. But this was the uh, Celestial Nirvana one. And it is gorgeous. Some of the pinks in this one are perfect. I like this combination right here is one of my favorite combos to wear. Um, it's just so pretty and delicate, but like the formula, her formula is, oh, is so buttery and beautiful. So this has been an absolute favorite. Okay, now we're getting to like some of my very tippity top. I mean, we're in the top six here. Um, and y'all are gonna be, y'all are gonna be like really surprised, I think. Because I have not ranked it according to like bougie brands. I've ranked it according to just the ones I'm, that are just favorites that I'm so drawn to and love to wear and are so like useful for me and whatnot. Um, but anyway, so I am an ABH girl. So I was so thrilled to get the Primrose palette. This may have been our ABH box. I can't remember. Um, but no, I love this. I think this is great for like a fall one, but I don't know if we got it in the fall. But I have loved it, love, love, loved it. Um, 
beautiful and versatile and I'm I'm an ABH girl so I was so happy to get it so that's my number six and then my number five is the Dominique Cosmetics Essential Palette this is just the prettiest prettiest palette y'all and it still feels so bougie to me like the packaging it feels like glass or crystal or something it is so beautiful. Now, the only thing is it's very subtle, very subtle, um, but it's pretty subtle colors, you know, like, but I'm always drawn to this side, these like lavendery type shades and stuff, but I've also played with this side. Every look I've done, I've loved. It's, it's so pretty. It's just, it's like, oh, this is one of my favorites we've gotten. I think this was Icon Box also. Okay. This is where there's some controversy from you guys. If you've been around and you've watched my rankings videos in the past and some of my other Ipsy videos, this is where there's, there's both the next two palettes, all right? This is where I think there is like a divide amongst you guys and Ipsy. I love our Siete London palettes, y'all. A lot of you guys hate them. I love them. Um, some of y'all love them too, but it, it, I feel like it's like love hate with this. Okay, so coming in for my number four is the Brazilian Glow Eyeshadow Palette. First of all, you got so many pans in here to choose from, but I think that it's just the the soft colors of these and like the the mix of so many different colors that I tend to wear are in this palette as well as the next one coming in at number three is that latest I am a woman palette that we got what like last month this one is my favorite of the two I just I am so drawn to the shimmers in there kind of has that um grungy feeling but you got so many like pinks, you got burgundies, you've just got a mix of so many of the colors that I use. And then these are like those lighter, um, shimmery, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, and I think it's just being a bridal makeup artist, you guys. Um, most brides don't want like hugely colorful looks and all, but they all love these very faint, like, princess-like colors in here. Like, these are all the colors we use in bridal makeup. Um, I mean, if we're not going to go with just straight-up neutrals and stuff, it's like, this is what my brides all think of, you know, and these make these soft, elegant, like, uh, but party looks and all. So, I just, I love these. I love Siete London. <laughs> I do. I do. Now, you know, we talked about the Spice palette. Um, and I love that one also. Like, yeah, I just, I am a Siete London girl. But I know that that is not the case with a lot of you guys in Ipsy. So, I think it's like half and half here I've seen. So, maybe some disagreement there. All right. You guys are going to be like, really? This is your number one and two? Both from the same brand also. This is what I reach for the most. And like my eyes and my hands are just so drawn to. And I just want to play with like every day. It makes the soft princessy feeling. It's like it's a good formula and it just it sparkles and shifts. It is beautiful and it's also it's not like too little amount of pans, like it's not a quad, but it's not a huge overwhelming palette either. So you can still use it for travel a little bit. That is the Wonder Beauty palettes. So coming in at number two is, this was the Trailblazer one. I didn't know if I was gonna really like it because of the greens in there. And I'm not really a big green wearing kind of gal. However, it can make a softer, green than it looks like in the pan, like a lot softer. It ends up coming off with this just very earthy, springy look. And I just, I adore this palette, but look at how these shimmers kind of like shift and pick up on the light. 
they are just so pretty. There's just something about this packaging, about the formula. Like, I absolutely love it. And I've been reaching for it all spring and summer. And then that leaves us with number one, which is the Sweet Escapes. This was like a spring one, I think. But look at that. The pinks, the lavenderies, the soft hint of pretty soft yellow, but then also a little bit of neutrals. Like it is just gorgeous, gorgeous. And I, I just, the shifty, like it's so pretty. So that's the one I rank number one. These are like my favorites that Ipsy has ever given us. Um, but that being said, um, now I know if you've watched my other eyeshadow palette rankings videos like each month, my Siete London ones fell at the very top a few times, um, even above these. So, you know, like one thing I note in that video is that sometimes my opinions change each month, like, you know, just what I'm in the mood for, what I've been really gravitating for, maybe as I do more looks and I come to love those particular looks, you know, sometimes my, my rank, my priorities shift a little bit. Um, and this could shift again, but overall, these are the ones that have kind of been in the very top of my Ipsy, um, palettes and all. So overall thoughts on Ipsy palettes. We have gotten some Pat McGrath, which you cannot like argue with her formula. You just can't guys. Um, you can't argue with the Il Maquillage formula, though we keep seeing it as repeats, I think. Fenty Beauty, I think a lot of people love the Fenty Beauty, but we haven't gotten them. Those are the only Fenty Beauty eyeshadow I think we've ever gotten. So we've had a few like big hits. I think most people loved the Wander Beauty palettes like I did too. Um, I think a lot of people really like the Dominique Cosmetics palettes as well. I think where there has been some mixed ideas has been, like I said, the Siete London that I love. <laughs> um, I've heard mixed on the Violet Voss. That's kind of got like some love it, some hate it. I'm kind of just like so-so on Violet Voss for myself. I, I, I like it when we get Violet Voss, but um, I don't necessarily want it like all the time. Uh, Laura Geller. I think a lot of people agree with me on the Laura Geller, but I've seen a few who love the Laura Geller too. Yeah, so, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of like, love it or hate it ones, but I think we've had a few big hits as well. And I think we've had a few flops as well. And then we'll talk about like the Ipsy Glam Bag for a minute. You know, for a while, we would always get the same little like quads. And I think they've really expanded away from that recently. We've been getting like different mixes of palettes now. Like, you know, that has a lot more and they're a little more colorful and just, so sometimes they do sprinkle in something different and that's great. You know, I think I've heard from some people, they feel like all of the Ipsy palettes are crap and they just, they're so tired of it. And I tend to see that a lot with the folks who are a lot more into indie brands. Um, you know, they have like their certain niche of uh, formulas that are like super buttery and colorful and all of that. And so I think what happens with Ipsy though is Ipsy, you know, I think they're kind of catering to like the broad overall folks. And you kind of think about it almost like in real estate, I think. You have a lot of real estate agents will tell you like, don't paint your walls bright blue because, you know, that's not going to appeal. That's only going to appeal to like 5% of the population or something. You want to appeal to as many people as possible. So they always say, paint your walls kind of a neutral color, like a light, you know, just beige or light gray or like, you know, something that's kind of going with everything. Don't have too crazy of accent colors and all of that. So I think it's kind of the same thing, appealing to the most amount of people as possible. So sometimes you might see things that seem boring to others who are huge makeup lovers that love all kinds of, of things, you know? I think if I had to critique Ipsy on their eyeshadow palettes, I think what they really, really need to bring back is really working on their customization better and truly listening to customers on what we're putting in our profiles and expand the profiles and ask, do you love more cool tones versus 
warm tones? Do you love very colorful and vibrant versus neutrals? And maybe put more than one palette of the month in there. Have like two different palettes each month and you choose which palette you want. Make palettes a little more choice options um, so that, you know, you're getting your type of palette that you love for you. And I think that that's probably my biggest critique of all overall, not just eyeshadow palettes is Ipsy should listen to their customers more on what we like because they do it with skincare too. They give me products for like oily skin all the time when I have dry, mature skin, you know, so things like that. So to me, I think that if they would customize a little bit more for everybody's preferences on what they love, give them uh, a list of different types of brands and ask what brands do you love the most? You know, like just really listen to the customers on it. I think that you'll have some happier customers overall when it comes to eyeshadow palettes and everything else with it. See, so that's just my, my two cents worth. Overall, do I think that all of, do I think that Ipsy palettes are bad? No, I think they're average for the most part, but occasionally we get some really good ones. So that's, that's my overall thoughts on it. All right. This got very long. Sorry guys, but it was fun and hope that you guys enjoyed this and let me know if you agree, disagree on some of these brands, some of these palettes. And if you think I'm crazy for my Siete London love, <laughs> it's okay. You won't offend me. You can let me know your opinion. Um, yeah. Let me know which ones have been your favorite palettes that you've gotten from Ipsy. I would love to know, like, what is your top number one? All right, guys, that wraps it up. Make sure that you stick around if you love all things Ipsy, because you know your girl covers all the spoilers, unboxings, try-ons, reviews. And if you love eyeshadow palettes, rankings, declutters, eyeshadow looks, all that fun and all the fun beauty, you'll want to stick around here. Pop that subscribe. Turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.